All right, let's talk about the number fourth overall pick, Kyle Pitts, who did not have as great of a statistical year in year two than he did in year one when he became the second tight end ever to get over a thousand receiving yards in his rookie year. So what happened with Kyle Pitts? Is he still good? Let's get into it, starting off with this play. Uh, it's going to be a zone coverage play. It's a, you know, a cover six. So uh, the way it works is there are three Seahawks players covering deep down the field, but Atlanta is going to be running a play action. That will be Kyle Pitts's route. So we're going to go over the middle. You run the play action, get guys out of position, and then hopefully, you know, the players who are further deep stay further deep. And then, you know, they haven't come in and gotten in position to knock the ball away. Uh, if they do, then it could be incomplete. But that's the way this play is designed to work. Or at least so it seems. That will actually be Kyle Pitts' route on this play. He'll fake as though he's going over the middle, but is instead running a deep route. And the way the Arthur Smith scheme tends to work is they love to do a lot of the routes that I showed you earlier that I you know, uh, lied to you and told you the play was going to be. But then they like to play off of that and do new unique things on top of it that can allow for more yards to be gained. That's the way the system is designed to work. That's the way this play is designed to work. So, you're going to see Mariota takes the snap, runs the play action, and rolls out. And for Kyle Pitts, he's doing a good job at selling as though he's going over the middle. Again, what did I tell you is the way to beat this if you're one of the players covering deep? You don't want to stay past him. You want to make sure you come in and are able to knock the ball away if he runs in that direction. So when he runs deep, look at the acceleration Pitts has to get by the defensive backs, and then the throw was just a bit outside of his reach. Very good play from Kyle Pitts. So I did still see flashes of that superstar potential type guy, and I wouldn't pay over I, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the lack of receiving yards. Listen, do you want to see a guy get receiving yards? Sure. But I think that, you know, one of the issues that we have is that people basically look at receiving yards and say that that is you know, the end all be all. Oh, he only had 356 receiving yards. Guess he sucks now. Well, why does he suck in year two? How did that happen? I, I don't. I don't think that that's the case. I think he still has talent. One of the things I thought he did a very good job of, uh, you know, so far in his career, but, you know, I, th I thought he did a good job of this last year, just being able to win in situations like this, where you're going over the middle, trying to find, a, you know, a gap in coverage, and, you know, with B. John Robinson there now, these plays should probably be easier, as teams will be more focused on the run. Anyway, watch how when this play begins, you see that right here, uh, Kyle Pitts is just now starting to cut over the middle. We did a good job of kind of waiting before he cuts. And again, as you see, he cuts so well, he is able to be able to make the grab. Someone at his size should not be able to cut as well as he does, but he does cut very well, which is what allowed him to you know, even be able to go down and make a difficult catch on top of it. One of the things that obviously helps Kyle Pitts, and this is part of why he was drafted fourth overall, is him being a tight end just opens up the door for you using him in unique ways, right? You don't have to just use him as a receiver. Now, you don't have to just use receivers as receivers either. You know, we've seen Cooper Cup run plays like this, but still, uh, it's easier to do this if tight end it's more common to do this with a tight end and this is what this is where it's going to be a zone coverage play that the Seahawks are running and I've highlighted Kyle Pitts on the screen he is the guy who I have circled in yellow first Atlanta's going to have that receiver run that route right there basically just trying to clear out the area so then when Pitts runs that route hopefully the corner is you know already out of position at this point and no one could be open down the field you know uh, if Seattle picks this up, a linebacker could run over or just a player in general who's covering the middle of the field could run over and cover him. But this is how you can get mismatches, which is what the Falcons are trying to do here. Get a worse player on Kyle Pitts if possible instead of a great corner on him. Look at how when this play begins, again, uh, Mariota runs this play action, and you see that this has worked. You were able to get the corner away, and yet you now have a favorable matchup. But not a ton of separation. That's the downside, right? And so you're going to basically have to hope that Pitts can make a good play if you're going to throw it up here. However, when the ball is thrown up, you see Pitts is able to go up and make the grab. Again, I'm not saying he did it as consistently last year as he did two years ago, but he definitely showed flashes of greatness relatively consistently too, I would add. I think that he did. Again, one of the things that I think he does so well is just the way that he cuts. I kind of touched on this earlier in a very similar play, but I want to show another play just because I feel like it does do a good uh, job just exemplifying what he can do. So what's going to happen here? Uh, again, zone coverage, just trying to find a gap in coverage over the middle. But again, 
the corner could come in and cover his route. That is part of it. So the guy who's in charge of covering what's the top right-hand corner of the screen, so deep to the offense's left, uh, that guy could come in and cover the route. But right when this play begins, again, you see Kyle Pitts right here. Watch him kind of slow down, and he's really just trying to not give anything away, not make it clear what his route could be. Is he running deep? Is he running towards the sideline? Is he running over the middle? We know because we know the play, but the corner obviously doesn't. So when he does cut over the middle, there is a window to make the throw, uh, and he's able to make the grab there. So again, these are the kind of things that you like to see Kyle Pitts be able to do, and he does do these relatively consistently, I think. So is Kyle Pitts washed up? No, Kyle Pitts is not washed up. He's not in as good of a situation this year as he was in previous years. Okay, I'll give you, uh, or as he was, not previous years, but as he was in his rookie year, sure, I'll give you that one. But as a whole, I mean, he's still being able to make plays. Something like this is another one where what's going to happen here is it's going to be zone coverage. And so his route's the one that's going to eventually break off and go towards the uh, side line. The way it works is you have one receiver who's pushing the corner further deep and then Pitts goes towards the sideline. Hopefully he is past the player covering over the middle uh, and then with the corner pushed deep, there could be a bubble. Right when this play begins, Mariota takes the snap and he is going to look down the field. And at this point, there isn't a ton of separation. But again, Mariota going to basically say, you know what, let's just give my great talented player a chance here right it makes some sense and I'm sure some people are wondering well if Kyle Pitts isn't washed up what happened what was the biggest difference from year one to year two why did the numbers go down well he didn't have as good of a quarterback throwing to him uh you know last year I know Matt Ryan didn't have a great year last year either but was still solid his last year in Atlanta but look, as you see, this is just an uncatchable ball. And, you know, Pitts actually got a bit of separation there, but still just wasn't able to make the play because it wasn't a catchable ball. Uh, you know, I, and maybe that was intentional. Maybe that was sort of a half throwaway type situation. Throw it in the spot where, uh, you know, it's not going to be caught. But, uh, you know, maybe if there's a, a pull on a jersey or something, you could still get a pass interference. I don't know. Maybe that's the logic behind it. But either way, uh, you know, I think Kyle Pitts would have liked to have an opportunity to make that grab. He got those opportunities year one. Didn't get as many year two. And it's a lot more complex than just trying to find one simple example of what went wrong in year two. But the main thing I was trying to do in this video was just determine, is he still good? Can he still play at a high level? And to me, he can. I mean, again, why would he be a great as a rookie and then not be able to replicate that for the rest of his career? That seems highly unlikely. What I would much more expect would be that, no, he had a really good, uh, you know, first season and then still has, you know, okay, got banged up in 2022, maybe took a step back a little bit, but I, I still expect him to have a, a very good year three, and I think that he will still be a good player. And I do think that there's, you know, a real chance that, listen, I've never been a big fan of the, you know, drafting a running back with pick number eight strategy. Don't think it's a great one, but I do have to say, I do think B. John Robinson will help open up that offense a lot and could make things a lot easier for Kyle Pitts. So uh, that's another thing to get excited about if you're an Atlanta Falcons fan. But is Kyle Pitts washed up uh, as a second year player? Obviously not. He's still very good and will be good next year, I would assume. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Kyle Pitts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.